Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley, I'm an intern architect in Ontario. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to find a mentor and supervising architect for your internship program. I'll be sharing my experience and giving you guys some tips as well. So if you're interested, let's get started. So in order to become a licensed architect, you need to collect 3,720 hours of experience. And in order to collect that experience, you need to become an intern architect to collect those hours. So in order to become an intern architect, you do not need to be employed. So you don't need your supervising architect right away, but you need to have a mentor. So one of the things you'll need to do is find a mentor and how do you go about finding a mentor and what exactly is a mentor? So we're going to be talking about what a mentor is versus a supervising architect as well. Your mentor is going to be important on your journey of becoming an architect and they're going to follow along on your journey. Now if you decide later on on your journey of your internship program and you feel like you and your mentor are not connecting well, the good news is that you can change mentors. You're not tied to that mentor forever. <laughs> so you can change mentors. And of course, if you do change your workplace, you can also change supervising architects as well. Now, what is a mentor? Your mentor needs to be a licensed architect or a retired architect. They need to be outside of your place of employment so they cannot be tied to where you're working and the idea of the mentor is that they're going to be unbiased they're going to be able to help you with work relationships at the office that you're working at and they're going to be able to help you without having the bias of working at the place of employment in which you're working at now this is important because i find that the one positive thing of the internship program is your mentor and the supervising architect I found it to be very helpful and you can go to your mentor if you have any questions or need help on deciding on where you're going or you need some direction you can go to your mentor so your mentor will also sign your CRB which is your experience record book your experience record book and they're gonna be giving you some feedback as well so every 900 to a thousand hours you need to submit your log and to do that your mentor needs to sign off on that log as well and you would sit down with them and hopefully you meet with them more than just every 900 1000 hours but the idea is that you would sit down with them and discuss any issues you're having um, and they can give you some guidance and some feedback and finding a mentor can be a little bit challenging but it's not that difficult because there is an importance in the architectural field of really passing on that experience and knowledge that you've gained as an architect to the next generation of architects so interns and as an architect since you already went through that whole process the idea is that you need to also give back to the next intern who's also in that position of wanting to get their license. So in a way they're obligated to mentor you, but that could be a bit challenging because some mentors already have um, other interns that they're mentoring and they don't have time to take on another intern. So, it, so you might not get an answer from them. And to be honest, when I was looking for my mentor, first person that I did ask, didn't really work out for me and that's okay so i looked again and i looked for someone else and i got positive feedback that they would be able to help me so don't take the first no as like it's not gonna happen it will you just have to go out and look for someone else how do you find a mentor so one of the ways that you could look for your mentor and this is how I found my mentor is through academia so if you went to school if you finish your education at the province in which you plan to get licensed then you can look into the professors and the connections that you already have so you might have already worked with a professor taken a course from one of the professors who are licensed so if they are licensed then they can become your mentor now if you didn't go to school in 
the province in which you plan to get your license and you don't have any connections with any of the local universities, then you may want to get involved in the community and look at local community events where you can get involved. It's like, for example, in Toronto, there's a Society of Architects um, where you can get involved and there's always s events going on, social events and so on, where you can get connected with other architects. And that could be a great way to build some connections with architects that are licensed and then you can bring it up and just ask them to be your mentor. Now your mentor can also be a previous employer in which you worked with and you can ask them to be your mentor as well. Or it could be a previous intern and they could then become your mentor as long as of course they're licensed or they were licensed like a retired architect. So your supervising architect is different from your mentor. Your, the supervising architect needs to be at your workplace where you're currently employed. And the idea with the supervising architect is they're going to be checking in with you on a regular basis. Honestly, on a day-to-day -day basis, your supervising architect needs to be licensed in the jurisdiction that you are working in. For example, I'm in Ontario. My supervising architect was a licensed architect in Ontario. So that is one of the requirements and they cannot be retired. So for the mentor, they could be a retired architect, but for your supervising architect, they can't be retired. They have to be practicing because you're working with them on a day-to-day -day basis. So the supervising architect plays an important role as well in your CRB. So when you are filling in and logging in your hours, the first person to review your hours is your supervising architect. And they're gonna provide you comments in your log. So here we have the old CRB, which is the form. So now in Ontario, at least, you can actually log in your hours online. And it used to be that we had to do it through the form and then mail it to, for example, the OAA. So here we have the CRB experience summary. And this is where you would enter your intern identification and then your employer information and then the period of which you're logging from. Now, if you guys are interested in getting more detailed information on how I logged my hours and how I keep track of them, then let me know in the comments down below if that's something that would be useful for you guys. So then this is where you would include your projects and the specific activities that you did for that particular project for that particular category. So for example, uh, programming, site analysis, and, and so on, you would describe your activities for that particular category. So basically you're explaining what you did under, for example, code research in that project and so and so on and then you have a summary page of the work now this is where the supervising architect from the place in where you're working at your employer would fill out and make comments so they're going to comment on the level of responsibility and involvement requested from the intern and relative uh, level taken and performed by the intern uh, they're also going to comment on the overall attitude and philosophy and professional goals of the intern. And they're also going to give you some recommendations for the next six years that they would like to see from you. And they will also comment an extent uh, to which the intern has been exposed to the activities. So they're going to provide those comments. So they play an important role in filling out your CRB. And then they're going to sign and print their name and date it. Now, in the old system, the mentor, as you can see here, only looks at the comments that the supervising architect does, and they'll kind of, you can talk uh, to them and talk about so far your experience, and you can get some guidance from them as well, and then they would sign your log, and then they would sign your CRB, and that's about it. In the online system, there is the option for the mentor to add some comments and so on which is uh, i think a nice addition so that's basically what the supervising architect does in the uh, crb now how do you find your supervising architect this one's a bit easier it's the architect you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis so finding your supervising architect is simple and if you do move practices 
you can switch your supervising architect as well. If you need more information about the internship program, how to become an intern architect, and how to get started, then I would check out my other video that I've actually put together on how to become an intern architect and how to get started. So if you guys are interested in that, you could uh, check out in the description box. I've included a link down below. And also I have a few other videos that might be helpful for you guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like. And of course, if you want to see more content, make sure to subscribe as well. I hope to see you guys on future videos. Until then, bye.